Before starting their final project, artists make thumbnail sketches. Thumbnail sketch is a little sketch that doesn't take very long to make, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a good way to figure out what ideas you want to use and what ones won't work. So I drew three rectangles about the same proportion as the paper I'm going to be using, but quite a bit smaller. And then I'm just trying out different things. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the whole reason for a thumbnail sketch. In fact, maybe it's a good idea to use a pen for a thumbnail sketch. You don't think you have to erase it. Because a lot of times when people are making their thumbnail sketch, it's like, oops, I made a mistake. I've got to erase now. But that's the whole purpose of making thumbnail sketches is that they don't have to be perfect. And you're trying out new ideas, different things. You can use just about anything as the central figure for your MOLA. And then what you do is you make echo lines around it. At least that's what I call them as echo lines. If you look at MOLAs, you'll see that there's several outlines around the main uh, picture and they're all different colors and they go around the main picture just like a rainbow. And so that's one of the things that's distinctive of MOLAs. So I'm starting out by drawing some echo lines around the horse that I've chosen as my main subject for my MOLA. The thing about this is that you don't have to make them realistic. They're going to be in all kinds of bright colors that are nothing close to what their original color is, at least the horse. And so I'm going to put spots on this horse and I'm going to make each spot have like several echo lines around it and they're all going to be different colors. So it's going to be really bright if I decide to use that design. And I'm even adding something in the tail here. And then the next thing is to choose what kind of shape you're going to have around the outside because they don't just have like one picture in the middle and then just leave it. It's surrounded by all kinds of different shapes. Some of them are abstract, some of them are geometric, and some of them are actually a stylized, um, a stylized drawing of something else like this tree here. I decided I'm going to use that as part of this picture. And within the tree shape, I'm just adding some other decorative shapes. They don't have to be anything close to what a real tree would look like. They just have to be decorative. On most molas, they balance one thing on one side with something else on the other side. A lot of times they make them symmetrical, which means one side's exactly like or the mirror image of the other side. And this one will be balanced in a symmetrical way, but it's not symmetrical because the trees balance each other, but they don't look exactly like each other. They're not the same size. They're not the same shape exactly. They have different details. And so now I'm using a tree as my next subject. And again, doing the echo lines. That's usually the first thing that you would do when you're designing your molas to make your main subject and then make echo lines around it. You want several echo lines, but you don't want to overdo it and have so many that it's going to be really hard to actually make the project. So think about that when you do it, because you're going to be cutting all of these out of uh, construction paper, colored construction paper. So to fill up the space in this picture, I'm just going to make like forms that are like plants or leaves or things like that. It seems like they always, when they're designing a MOLA, they just fill the space up with all kinds of shapes. And they try to make them harmonize and go together. And so it seems to work pretty well to have like plant-like shapes along with the tree, like leaves, things like that. You can see that this thumbnail sketch is a little off balance. It's um, more symmetrical than the other ones because whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm repeating on the other. But remember, it's just a planning sketch, and so it can be imperfect, and you don't have to go in and fix it. So whatever I'm putting on one side, I'm putting on the other. And a lot of times, they'll do something like that, um, make a symmetrical design, but the pieces won't be exactly alike. And these, if I wanted them to be exactly alike, I could actually 
take some paper, you know, a few th thicknesses of paper, and cut out one shape and then have several of the same shape exactly like the other one. Okay, so here's my last thumbnail sketch, and I'm, you know, actually I started out with this drawing of a, a bird, and I'm putting feather forms in to his body, but obviously they're not, there's no attempt to make it look like actual real feathers that would be on his body, they're way too big. And just trying some other designs on his wings. So if you're confused about how to go about making thumbnail sketches, I'm hoping that this will give you an idea of how to get started. You just make your rectangles, you pick out your subjects, and then you go from there. Have a good time.